Hey, buddies, Potato Big Whiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI and Scythia, where we're going for our religion game, and things have been going pretty terribly. We spawned in what is arguably the worst location on the entire map, but we made the best of a bad situation. We got out our early religion, and then we managed to get a few extra cities. Nothing crazy, just like a few extra cities. And we're going to try and get out a few more as well. We're potentially, you know, we're going to get the mausoleum. We're going to get the Petra. We're, we're trying to make the best of a bad situation, and it's not going too badly. Our faith per turn is really disgusting, actually. Consider, uh, one of the things you have to consider is that on Deity, I'm pretty sure that the AI gets an 80% faith production bo bo uh, boost, and we are actually producing more faith than any other Deity AI in the game right now. Ah, so again, <laughs> that, has come, that has come at a price, all right? Our science is absolutely terrible and we will lose any war that gets declared on me. However, I have been carefully trying to play the diplomacy game and keep everyone happy with me so that I don't ever have to end up in war. So we're, you know, I would say that we're in a relatively strong position um, for achieving our goal. We are going to be picking up Exodus of the Evangelists this era because our current goal is to sort of turn on the engine, okay? We have spent basically the majority of our time now, constructing the engine with which we will win the game, right? We've settled a bunch of cities, we built a bunch of holy sites, we explored the world to find all the city-states, and now it's time to turn that engine on. And one key part of turning that engine on is picking up the government uh, theocracy. Theocracy is a big part of the engine because it gives us access to some very, very important abilities. The first one being the extra religious combat strength, which stacks with Scythia's ability to do extra damage against wounded religious units, as well as the little bit of extra faith gain. And the most important bit is the 15% discount on purchases with faith. Um, so this is sort of like the first cylinder of the engine firing, if you will. The next cylinder of the engine will follow directly behind this one as a consequence consequence of that cheaper that that cheaper faith production that's going to be buying two apostles to evangelize their religion and that's like the second part of the engine activating and then the third part of the engine activating is getting once we evangelize our religion is getting our tier three worship building building that everywhere and then the final part of the engine is getting every single one of these religious city states up to a level three relationship so that we can crank out an insane amount of faith and then the engine is like fully built cranking. We spam as many apostles, missionaries and gurus as possible. Although I would argue as Scythia, you just want to pump apostles. Um, and we want to maintain suzerainty of Yerevan. Oh, sorry. The final piece of the engine. The very, very final piece of the engine is getting Moksha up to patron saint. But that should be relatively trivial. So that is like the huge, massive combo that we're going for here. Hopefully that explains why I've made the decisions that I've made. Um, realistically, at this stage of the game, now that we have assembled all the parts for turning on the um, win the game through religion engine, I could actually just scroll to the end of the tech tree and click here um, because science is now essentially irrelevant. We are so far behind on science that we're never going to win a war. Nothing unlocks from the science tree that actually helps me this game, with the exception of maybe small little buffs like steer up industrialization, like none of the, I'm never building any of this, okay? I've completely geared my empire towards one thing and that's generating as much faith as humanly possible. So this is essentially like an all-in strategy. This is like, I, if I was playing StarCraft 2, I would have actually like deleted my, my home base uh, the second I had enough minerals and then dropped my hive in like the enemy city. Like that, that is the level of all-in that we are right now. There is no getting back. The only maybe small thing that might be useful here is like going or, or like we six pooled someone right that's we're doing the equivalent of a, of a six pool maybe a shipyard could be useful here <laughs> shipyards could be useful cartography for gold could be useful things like stirrups for the extra food on pastures could be useful unlocking nitre could be useful because that's more stuff we can sell to the ai unlocking coal same reason food from plantations like there's small little buffs here in the science tree but realistically i could click here and have essentially the equivalent experience. But but I'm not going to do that. I am going to do slight optimizations. I do want to pick up stirrups. I do want to pick up military engineering for that nighter. And I think I'll, I'll have those two techs be that because that's like 15 turns of decisions I've just made there for technology. I'm going to start swapping tiles to the pearly gates now because this city is going to be my coastal powerhouse. It's going to have mausoleum. It's going to be generating an insane amount of resources. In fact, it's already going to grow like insanely huge off the back of these two fisheries. It's kind of ridiculous, to be honest. But 15 turns until that mausoleum. I'm excited about that prospect. That'll make a big difference to my game, for sure. And I need to also start thinking about builders, uh, specifically in reference to improving my tiles, right? Uh, with regards to generating faith. Again, faith does two things. It gets you, it gets, it lets you spread your religion and it lets you um, do some tourism things. We're not doing tourism this game. So we are literally all in 
I have I have I have mined zero gas this game and uh, I am still building Zerglings on three bases, even though it's minute 30 of the game. But yeah, we're we're we are we are down bad. We're in deep and we are looking for a way out. Boom. Nice. There's 20 iron. That is actually quite nice because people do buy iron. So Japan will give me 28 gold per turn. I will be taking that gold per turn. Uh, I like taking gold per turn because the game will last a little bit longer. So getting long term value as much as possible. Also, the amount of trading that I've done this game to try and get myself to this position is insane. Um, there is the apostle that we plan to use to evangelize. We'll get our first evangelize off. Boom. And I'll be able to buy my next apostle next turn. So in terms of beliefs, let's have a look at some of these other religions that have been founded. We've got Buddhism over here. This was the first religion that was founded. It went for feed the world and meeting houses. These are not bad beliefs. These are the kind of beliefs that I might have taken this game, actually, because it would have really helped secure me um, long term. But hey, we ended up with pretty good beliefs all the same. Warrior mugs on Eastern Orthodoxy. Yeah, I don't think this isn't a very good religion. World wonder faith. Synagogues are okay. Papal primacy is pretty good. I might have taken that this game. Uh, Defender of the faith. Pretty strong. Defender of the faith would have been really good for us to be able to survive if it was like a multiplayer game. And I was trying to do some kind of goofy play. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think any of the beliefs that have been taken are really of consequence to me. The ones that are sort of appealing to me here... Um, are things like pilgrimage, plus two faith for each following the city, for plus two faith for each city following this religion. That is a way to extend the power of our faith engine. It means the more that we convert, the, the more faith that we start to generate back. Um, so I definitely, in my mind, I'm definitely feeling like it's the type of... Now, if I wanted to try to get back into the game, I would go for cross-cultural dialogue and then spread my religion because that would give me the science that I could get back into the game and win you know, through another victory type, but we're going all in on, on the, um, on the faith game. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a pilgrimage. So that means every time I convert a city now, I should be getting an extra two faith per turn, which is not a huge amount in the grand scheme of things, but every little chunk of faith that you can squeeze out makes a big difference in, in, in like over the course of, you know, 10, 20 turns. It's like, like an extra, you know, when you consider like individually, each one won't make a big difference, but the collective amount of faith that I'll be generating from it will make a difference over the course of a game. That's what I'm, that's basically the gist of what I'm trying to say. So one of the other things that we've been really, really unlucky with this game is that we had basically zero, and I mean zero, uh, ability to to chop this game like I could have lived with this bad land but I had like three forests in my entire empire so I haven't even been able to do like a recovery locust game I've just been kind of chopping now at this stage of the game because I want to place down tile improvements that aren't lumber mills I am very happy with pearly gates now that is a strong city I, I you know if I can get the petra if I can get the small things like that I will have an empire worth talking about my worry is here that somebody has been like secretly building the petra this entire time but I mean there is only one result on the map when I use the map search so the potential for me to get petra and mausoleum which is kind of like I, I really do feel like petra and mausoleum oh my god potato you you should like you're doing completely new strategies right there should be some kind of meme like that because literally every game that I play I go for the Petra and the mausoleum, like every single game. I don't think there, can you guys remember a game that I've played where I didn't go for Petra mausoleum? Like it, it's been a while. Uh, Medieval Fairs, there's Merchant Confederation. I think I would like to plug in Merchant Confederation once I have all my envoys with these religious city states plugged in. But for now it's fine. Listen, I'm not trolling you guys with the meteor. I just, I just keep forgetting to, uh, to actually pick it up. Moksha, almost activated. Moksha's almonds are like 98% activated, okay? They're almost there. I do want to pick up civil service here because the chancery will generate me a ton of influence per turn, which will allow me to control more city-states. And by controlling those city-states, the chancery will also actually generate me faith. So picking up diplomatic service here is quite useful. There's the final apostle. Let's go ahead and evangelize our belief. Which of these buildings do we want to take? That is the real question here. Pagodas would give me a lot of things that I could sell to the AI and it potentially allow me to control the World Congress for a backup diplomatic victory. Stupas would potentially just increase the yields across my empire. Gurdwaras are good for growing. Um, mosques, I feel like, are probably my best bet if I'm going to go for a religion victory. Plus one spread is an incredible boost to your efficiency. To the point where now that I've spotted the, the mosque is still available, that like literally nothing else becomes like a viable pick. And this is pretty much what my religion looks like. I would say 90% of the time when I'm going for a religion victory. I'll take Holy Order, Pilgrimage and Mosque. And then whatever's up here just basically depends on the situation of the game. And then my Pantheon will look slightly different too. Um, but to put that in perspective, plus one spread on religious units is 
I think a 50% increase for missionaries or like a 33%. It's, it's a huge percentage increase in the efficiency of how much faith you put in. And then you add to the fact that my missionaries and apostles are cheaper to buy anyway. It's just, it's too much efficiency to pass up. So we have knights, we pick this up, we get the free military unit in the form of the knight, which also completes the mission with Chinguetti. Are barbarians disabled? Yes, we disabled barbarians this game. Let's go ahead and settle a city here on this four food tile that'll allow the city to grow quite rapidly, in fact. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and place a holy site on this hill, I think. Yes, I'm going to place the holy site on the hill. I know that sounds like blasphemy, but it is what we are going to do. I'm amazed that I'm holding Susantry of Auckland on a coastal map with only three envoys in them. I haven't been I haven't been Auckland taxed at all this game, and I'm super happy about it. In terms of where do I settle over here, they're really... Man, the, the land quality here is just so low. I do want to pick up that mercury at the very least. Yeah, that has some value to me. So over in Neopets, we could start building mosques. However, I don't think mosques hold a huge amount of value for me right now, at least not until I have like some level six envoys in some of these city states however preemptively building them isn't bad but i do think i could go for something like a granary monument first and then go for my mosque like pick up these buildings that like backfill you know i'm basically backfilling at this point but i can also get a little bit of converting going on over here which i'm happy about there is some potentially good land over here and i have a thousand faith in the bank um but we don't have moksha level two yet so i don't think the thousand faith in the bank needs to be used for anything just yet i mean in theory I could just get a few missionaries and send them out. Just a few cheap prospective missionaries until my engine is fully activated. Like these are four charge missionaries, so they're pretty good. I could also purchase an apostle to launch an inquisition, but launching an inquisition is more a defensive move or something you do for error score, which I don't think I need. I do have an error score tracker that I could have a look at. Let's see, favored. Uh, let's see, first aerodrome. Is there a way for me to see? I don't remember how much it's worth. I can't tell, but uh, we have, we have some potential here. I think it's worth about three error score. At least that's what my chat tells me. Uh, if we're looking at the city of Asterix here, I do feel like I could use a little bit of money to like speed the city along. Like if I grab that watermill, that's plus one production. If I purchase the granary, that's plus one food. The city will grow now. And then I'm going to pick up a, a five adjacency harbor here. But I reckon I want my monument and temple first. Possibly even temple before monument because that's worth four culture, whereas the monument's only two. But spending a little bit of gold on some of my cities is totally a viable thing for me to do. My best bet here, I think, is to sneak over to Norway with these missionaries and just give them a little bit of a um, little bit of a convert. Another key technology for me here is actually going to be cartography for the ability to embark. Otherwise, I think the majority of my gold now is going to go towards buying settlers to continue to expand. Might not, well, maybe that's not a good idea. Go ahead and sell off all our amber. That's another 33 gold per turn for selling amber. I don't know, maybe, maybe I use my gold on developing my empire. That might be the right move, honestly. The faster I develop my empire, the faster I win the game. Is there ever a time where a harbor slash commercial hub isn't a good second district? Um, pretty much never. It's always, it's always a good idea to get a harbor or a commercial hub as your, as one of your districts. Maybe if you're playing in a multiplayer game and you have someone else go harbor or harbor or commercial hub first and they feed you. Ooh, Basil has converted Rostavi to Shinto. We must eradicate this new faith. I'm going to go ahead and add this proposal. It would be kind of nice if people, ha if, if Basil had a little bit of heat on him. At the very least, I wouldn't hate it. I'd love to get Susan Tree of Nazca, but getting Susan Tree of some of these city-states is going to be very, very difficult this game. Let's have a look and see what luxuries are available. There are three luxuries here, actually. Yoink, yoink, yoink. So I just picked up uh, 12 amenities, 16 amenities from trade there for very, very cheap. The quick deals mod is incredible, but those 12 amenities will serve me very, very well. Uh, the Nightbot list isn't yet up updated for my new UI mods. It'll get updated in the near future. So if you just hold on, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get back to you on that one. We got some error score for settling uh, for the first time on these new areas. The problem is a lot of my cities are all on the same continent, so I'm not even able to gonna get value out of colonialism this game. Like pretty much all my cities are on the one continent. This is actually my first non-capital continent city here. For these newer cities, it might be better for me to go harbor first. I know that sounds a bit odd, but that'll actually develop these cities into something meaningful faster than it would if I were to do anything else. There's diplomatic service, so we could potentially start doing spy stuff now. And we have access to the Chancery too. The Chancery will almost certainly be built after the Grand Master's Chapel. The Chancery gives you plus three influence points per turn. Uh, to put that in perspective, I'm getting seven right now. So that's a huge boost to the influence per turn that I get per turn. I uh, will try to say that five times fast. Um, basically, it'll bring it down from about, what, 22 turns? Like 11 turns per envoy down to seven and a half turns per envoy. It's, it's a huge speed boost 
for Envoy production. So the Chancery is good. In fact, the Chancery is buyable. For a thousand gold, you, you should probably buy that if you can save up for it. Now, my question is now whether or not I have enough harbors built, placed and like, or under construction to make some changes to my government. In particular, get rid of conscription and instead maybe start thinking about plugging in. Oh, I haven't actually researched each of these. Um, I need to research veterancy for harbor production and naval infrastructure for harbor district adjacency bonuses. I think getting both of those online now are going to be a key part of advancing in this game. So I have a huge stack of faith built up, which is going to be amazing to expend it all. Fat stacks of faith, dude. How do you know when a building is worth buying? Uh, that's a tough one. Usually, you know, a building, building is worth buying when it provides you some kind of unique value that you can't get with gold otherwise. So, for example, if we talk about usually it's a building that gives you a lot of surplus value that you how do I, how do I, so things like the diplomatic quarter buildings, envoy points, it's the only way to get envoy points. So it's worth, it's worth buying them, right? Because you get that a few turns earlier. That's just envoy points that you cannot get back in the game. Uh, similarly, things like power plants, similarly, things like factories, factories and power plants, because you're only going to, um, ah, here's how you know. Here's how you know when to buy a building. Okay. The definitive, the definitive explanation, you know that you're going, you know that you want to buy a building either when you're going to be building a very small number of those buildings or you're going to be building a lot of those buildings and they give you huge value. Also, mausoleum, poggers, very pog. Plus one science, plus one faith, plus one culture and all coast tiles, as well as the double engineer thing. We don't care so much about the double engineer thing, but this giga city now intrigues me. Now that is a thumbnail right there, baby. One thing I will thank the civilization developers for is they made a game that had like incredibly easy to make thumbnails for. Like just look at, I, all I got to do is like position my camera like, like here and boom, we got ourselves a thumbnail. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at that. Look at that. In fact, I'm going to go a step further. I know I just spent all my gold, but it was worth it. I'm not even going to use this as my, I'm going to not even going to use this as my thumbnail until I get all those tiles improved. I know I was saving up for this building to buy. I know I was. I don't care. Right, we're pogging out. How do you remove the pins? Uh, when you're using the detailed map tack mod, you can shift A to place pins and then shift D to delete pins. And also you have a setting that you can set in the mod. I don't remember how to do it, but if you place a building on top of where a pin is and it's of the same thing, it'll automatically delete the pin for you. So that's helpful. I don't actually think I need a third district in this city. If I was going to go for a third district, uh, maybe like an entertainment complex or something, but otherwise I don't, I think, I think I have the two districts that I care about this game. Holy sites and harbors. That's it. Now that I have those, I just build the stuff in them. Um, and then we're good to go. Let's sell off a little bit of Diplo favor here to pick up a little bit more gold. There we go. I need just a scooch more gold to be able to um, to buy the chancery that I wanted to. God, everyone is broke. Well, I'm really, really close. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll buy a builder and then I'll, I'll look into um, doing some chancery stuff. They added an auto delete. Yeah, dude, the developer of the, he must have like, I feel like he like watched my game or something because I'm pretty sure I complained about that once. I was like, man, I wish they would just delete when you place things on them. Or maybe it was like, a, I don't know where he got it from. But even if he didn't get it from me, he was speaking directly to me. The developer of this detailed map tax mod literally lives in my walls, dude. Because he was able to know exactly how to like update that mod to my desires. It was insane. Like how on point that change is. The fact that the pins will auto delete themselves when you place a building down on top of them. Actual god tier. You could swap some tiles for a better thumbnail. Oh, we, oh don't we? We will. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. But we, uh, we gotta, we gotta build the fisheries first. You know what I'm saying? It's like, little did people know that I'm actually not very good at the game. What I did though is I got, I acquired a very particular set of skills that is almost entirely based around like building really good thumbnails for Civ videos. We are sitting on two envoys. We have the diplomatic league card plugged in, so we could potentially get good value on Vatican City here. If I pump twice into Vatican, I will get plus two faith on every temple and consulate, which will be a nice boost, like 22 faith per turn. So I think I will grab that. That's like the last time I'm going to get value out of this card. So I will now plug it out in exchange change for the uh, I'd love to plug in merchant and fed card but I wanted to plug in the charismatic leader here colonization will happen in fact we should probably colonize out of the city of um of pearly gates also just take a moment to appreciate just just how much god tier food and production is in this city it's so good I need to renew my friendships with some of the people on the map. There's technology we don't care about. We don't care. A lot of, a lot of the things. The, the one thing about the religion of victory that I'm not a huge fan of is that a lot of the things in the game, once you have like activated your religious almonds, you don't care about a lot of the stuff that happens. Like, for example, I don't really care about my tech tree anymore. I don't really care about my culture tree anymore. All I care about is spreading my religion. 
and getting as much spread as possible. Like, I kind of wish that religion and... I feel like... Here, here, here's my take. Are you guys ready? I feel like what they need to do is religion is really well integrated into military stuff because of crusade, and military spreading, and defender of the faith, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's hooked in well to military stuff. It would be kind of cool to have a, a maybe a little bit more of a hook on the military side of things like uh, Cass's Belly, Enforce Religion, where you killing, uh, when you attack someone with this Cass's Belly, killing their units causes like a faith bomb, kind of like Basil. That's kind of saying like, rather than like, uh, like I'm not here to conquer, I'm kind of like, maybe I'll take a city or two, but I'm really here to convert. That would make the game a little bit more interesting. I think maybe like late game buildings like the, like the broadcast center should increase religious pressure. If you have like a particular card plugged in, trade route uh, religious pressure should scale with the number of trade buildings you have. So it should be like one for you know basic, and then it should get slightly stronger once you have the lighthouse, another little bit stronger, so like plus one, and then plus two, and then seaports. You know, you could, you, you know, make it interact a little bit more with the culture and tech stuff. I think that would be kind of cool. I think it interacts well with the Diplomatic Congress in the game. Uh, the only things I don't think it interacts well is really with science and a little bit of the late game cultural stuff. But otherwise, I think it, it's pretty well integrated. It's integrated about as well as you can, you can make it. By a... Buy ourselves a um, a lighthouse here in the city of Ali Meadows. Now the city has a huge, huge incentive to grow. Um, so we are going to be prioritizing growth in this city. Yeah, like televangelist tech, all that kind of cool stuff. Maybe that's like a little bit too politically controversial because I know when you're making a game like this, like the decisions you make actually kind of incidentally belie some sort of politics that you have to be careful about how and where and what you pick and choose to keep in the game and add into the game because you might be you know you might be mis you might be uh contributing to the historiosity of human history i don't know or like the incorrect historiosity i don't know the word i'm looking for there the misrepresentation or like the justification of things in history you know what i mean like if you, you do have to be a little bit careful and I, i'm not sure how it applies to the thing we were talking about but you do have to be careful about that kind of thing tourism from faith generating tiles kind of links it i do think tourism and faith are the most are the best linked um but there's the petra any doubters, right? Who doubted that we would get revisionism? That's the word, revisionism. You got to be careful about revisionism and like justification and stuff. But there is the Petra. Um, any doubters didn't think I was going to get the Petra uh, have been officially beaten the F out. If you thought I wasn't get going to get the Petra, you're a piece. I'm just going to say it right now. You are a piece. And now I can start just cranking out Kurgans and monasteries and uh, enjoying my delicious yields. I'm kind of sad that I got this, uh, both the Petra and the mausoleum in the same episode because now I can't exploit them both for like two individual thumbnails. You know what? I'm that kind of guy that'll probably do that anyway. So uh, that's 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 the thing that we'll do. <laughs> but yeah, we really want to get control of Nazca if we can. I'll even pop down a harbor. Safe to start throwing down those harbors. Ooh, I forgot to change my government. Let me just pop. How expensive is it to change it? Three, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. Is there a cheap tech I can research real quick? Nah, I'll go for humanism. I need to retool my government a little bit. So we converted the city. Perfect. And that will continue to convert. We want to just have like a robust... I think we can convert Norway without any trouble, really. But if we can get Norway converted, that's like one sieve under control that we don't have to worry about. We do almost have cartography. So that's like the next part of the engine that we're activating. Ah, uh, my troops are merely passing by Mali. I don't know why Mali is act acting up right now. But hey, who knows? Who knows and who asks? That's what I say. Right, over here in Chertomlik, we got ourselves a harbor. I'll go ahead and build the lighthouse in here. I'll go lighthouse before harbors because I want those trade routes. Probably have a few trade routes knocking about. I've got two envoys in the bank. I could go to level three, but our man, that would start opening up the map a little bit. Uh, let's have a look. Who do I want to try and take? Su is, is there a sieve I want to try and take Susan to you of? I'm never going to get my hands on Nalanda, unfortunately. I think an extra envoy into Nazca would give me plus two faith in every temple and consulate building. I could theoretically go for Valletta, but I don't want to buy things with faith. That's the thing. I mean, I th well, actually, I mean, I could buy, oh, I could buy granaries and monuments and stuff like that. Ooh, buying granaries and monuments from Valletta. Mm, I think I'll hold on to this envoy for a little turn or two. But I eventually want to get Susan free of most of these city-states. So we shall leave it there for now. And not complicate matters too much. There we go. Now that right there, that's a YouTube thumbnail. The city of Pearly Gates. Just zoom out a little bit for the thumbnail. What do you guys think? A solid YouTube thumbnail? I think it is. Yeah, we, we can grab Valletta in two turns and then use our overwhelming faith to actually make up for a lot of these granary buildings um, that I'm building. I probably shouldn't be building them if I'm going to do that, actually. City of Compromise is ready for its third district, um, but I don't think I need another district. I think I'm happy. I could go for a relatively OK industrial zone if I went for an aqueduct in here. I don't think that matters. I don't I think that's too slow. It's way, 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 way too slow. I mean, maybe a harbor 
isn't the worst decision I could make for the extra trade route. Let's have a look at our, let's have a look at our envoy missions. That might inform us. So there is somebody that wants us to make a campus. I don't have a very good campus in here. So I can't think of a district that I really care about in here. We have everything we want. If we were going to transition out of a religion victory, we'd maybe build something else. But we're not transitioning this game. We are, we, are, we are all in on religion. So if we're all in on religion, we just start getting more settlers now. Um, more cities means less problems. And we have activated one of the final parts of our engine. Moksha is ready, which means instead of missionaries, I can start purchasing apostles in compromise. Uh, you know what I forgot to do? I totally forgot to declare a friendship with Norway and then get a uh, religious alliance with him. And I want that religious alliance so that I can send international trade routes to Norway. The ideal vessel bank and plugged in eventually. I think for now, though, I'm going to plug in Diplomatic League. Um, I'm going to take out Urban Planning in exchange for vessel bank, and I want both of these plugged in. We'll swap them around in a little while. I really also want naval infrastructure plugged in. Oh, man, okay, I'm going to have to do... I'm going to put naval infrastructure here. I want conscription out and I want veterancy in. So this will give me a boost towards my harbor production, a little bit of uh, amenities, builders and settlers, then harbor production, and being able to take control of Valletta here. So let's go ahead and send two envoys to Valletta. Boom, there's control of Valletta. And now I can go through my entire empire and just be like, oh, monument, granary. I don't want to buy mosques. Mosques are a little bit too expensive. I mean, I could theoretically, if we think about it, a mosque takes about 100 turns to pay itself off. But once we upgrade our relationship with some of those city states, it'll be a lot faster. But Ted Whiskey, when will you play a Poland game? I want to see you struggle with our city names. I mean, I struggle with Polish city names every single day. So, I mean, you have to wait for me to, to play Poland to have that. Um, like, yeah, I can actually just go through and buy monuments and granaries in every single city and save myself a huge amount of production and also increase the productivity, like the average productivity of all of my cities by a fairly large margin. Yes, it's going to cost me a lot of faith, but realistically, I'm making so much faith now that it's kind of not a problem. Here's the thing that we have to think about here. For every single one of these relationships that we get to max rank, we increase the amount of faith that we get back from our mosques by plus three. So we've got to think about that for now. Right now, if I were to buy a mosque, it would take over 100 turns for that mosque to pay itself off. That's the reality of the situation. However, if I were able to get to one, two, three, four, five, six, six religious city states to level six um, relationship, what's that? The payoff time is like 15 turns, right? Because it's um, it's six, uh, 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 three times seven is 21. And then you divide... Um, you divide 320 by 21. It goes down to 15 turns. So in my opinion, even though I would normally never do this, potentially buying mosques in my cities is actually a good play here. Can you explain how monuments increase your production? Monuments increase your production because then you don't have to build monuments, okay? A monument costs you like 60 production to build and then you can build something else. They also increase your production by claiming more tiles. The more tiles that your city owns, the more tiles that your city can work. The more tiles that your city can work, the higher potential population you get from your population. The more potential you get from your population, the more production you get. So that's culture kind of in a roundabout way leads you to more production. Um, so what was I thinking there? I am kind of tempted. I'm tempted to start buying my mosques. It's bad now, but it will pay off. It will pay off over the long course of the game. So... Even though under normal circumstances, I would never, ever do this. And I just made a bad decision because I bought a mosque that was almost finished anyway. Under normal circumstances, I would never, ever, ever buy my mosques. But it's just so powerful that I can't help it. I'm going to start trading with Nidoros from my cities. In particular, we're looking for religious value. And then I might just use my gold to buy like my shrines and temples. We'll see. Where's Moksha? Moksha is over here in in Khralix. Moksha isn't in compromise, so you're not getting his worth at all. I'm, I'm buying mer missionaries. I'm buying missionaries. Why do you think I'm buying missionaries there? Moksha doesn't boost missionaries. Th that's why I've been buying missionaries. Uh, let's make military units cheaper by production. And we'll also make, well, Buddhism stronger now is scary. I'm going to try to force my religion to be the strongest by putting six. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong one. Whoops. <laughs> I almost just like said, hey, you guys can pillage my religion. I'm going to try to put six votes on my religion here. Yeah, plus 10 strength for all units of this religion. That's perfect. I don't understand. I don't, wait, hold on. I don't understand the, um... The Moksha complaint. I've been I've been recruiting missionaries in compromise here. And then I just bought my mosque. I was going to move Moksha over. But now that I have my mosque here, I could just buy. I don't think it makes a difference, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think it makes a difference. So we're going to start recruiting apostles here from Kralix. Two per turn when we can. And these will be double promoted apostles where we can pick any promotion we want. And I'm going to tell you guys about the best promotions when you're in a situation like this. There is There is an objectively best set of promotions when you're in this situation. It exists. Let's see if we can't pick up enough gold to um, buy our building. This, the Chancery, that's plus three influence per turn. 
We're up to 10 influence per turn now. Exciting. So we really want to be looking for trade routes. I think our missionaries are doing the work. Let's convert Stavanger. Okay, so you might look at this list and depending on what you're reading here, if you're a new player, you might be like, oh, you know, you could spread in religion an extra two times. That's pretty good, right? That would be like 50% more spread power for my guy if I were to pick this. That's pretty damn good. And you would just be wrong, unfortunately. So the best promotions in this list are, depend are, are kind of circumstantial. If you're going for a Reliquaries game, Martyr is the most important one to get your hands on. If you are going for a game like I am, where I'm going for a religious combat game, Debater is really, really high value. But if you're going for a conversion game, in any case, any sense, the strongest combo is two different missionaries with some combination of proselytizer and translator. You send in the proselytizer so that he eliminates 75 of the existing pressure from religions in the target city. And then the translator is your faith bomb behind that if that doesn't convert the city. So you actually need to have the strongest conversion pair. You actually need to have two, two apostles working together with proselytizer and then plus charges and then another apostle with translator plus charges. If you have an if you have easy access to a natural wonder, you can take um, Pilgrim. Otherwise, honestly, just take Orator. It's oftentimes not worth it. Like, where is the nearest natural wonder? I don't even know. But yeah, proselytizer, boom, always the top pick. And then um, translator as his partner. These two guys together can convert uh, six cities using one charge each. It's insane. Convert the city. Perfect. Another Norwegian city has joined us. I remember every, and the, remember, every time we convert a city, we're getting two faith per turn, right? So now, now that we've perfectly set up our religious conversion engine, we have like a perpetual motion engine that's getting stronger and stronger over time. I know that breaks the like third law of thermodynamics or whatever, but this is the third law of, of religious dynamics, okay? We have cartography. Let's go ahead and pick up mass production for shipyards because we do have relatively good harbors this game. And then we just take uh, Orator. Orator on both of these guys. And then I would I would probably like to complete the trifecta, I would have like a cup an apostle or two with debater so you can kill enemy apostles. You can also do proselytizers. If you don't want to, if you want to like save a little bit of money on your apostles, you can do a proselytizer plus missionaries. I I prefer to do it this way. I don't know. I just it's less micromanagement, in my opinion. I just prefer to do it this way. And if you're going to go for a um a thing like here. Uh, a debater. These other promotions aren't too bad. Like you can go debater, boop, boop, boop. So now we can fight off enemy religious units pretty easily, especially because we're in like the the era of of my religion being super buffed by the uh, World Congress. Do you think there's any major part of the religious victory that needs a rework? Um, I don't think there's like a major part of it. You could probably do it like some small reworks here or there. Here or there. Here or there. Uh, let's buy a temple in here and then faith buy a mosque. Let's have a look here. Is there anywhere I could pick up an easy envoy? There's an easy envoy. Boom. And then I think I'll go straight for opera and ballet for those two envoys as well. And then colonialism for those two envoys. Because I need to I need to increase my relationship status with a lot of these city states. So even doing missions here is going to be a big, big boon for me. Um, when it comes to your debater, I think it's honestly it's fine to actually take something like proselytizer as well. And that's what I would do 99% of the time is just take proselytizer because it's the strongest of the promotions. Honestly, you could just make do with like debater proselytizer and completely annihilate the entire map of religion. I mean, it's slightly more optimal to kind of like mix and match a couple of the belief. But if you're being lazy, you can totally do it that way. I think the only real problem, I think uh, the only real major rework that Religious Victory in Civ 6 needs is that it should interact with the other victory conditions a little bit more. The, the fact that you only need faith to win is it's a little bit too one dimensional of a of a victory condition. I mean, at least in a science victory, you also have to get high production. In a culture victory, you have to worry about tourism, domination. You have to balance like military micromanagement with economy, with uh, positioning and, you know, timings. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into a lot of these other victory conditions. Whereas religion, they attempted to make it a little bit more interesting. And I think they did an OK job at making religion interesting, but they didn't quite hit the mark where I would say like, oh yeah, religion is good. It's just kind of religious, religious victory is just kind of, I think in multiplayer, there's just a few, well, one of the major reworks I would say is that you shouldn't be able to kill religious units with military units. That's kind of dumb. Or at least there should be some kind of cost. I don't know. But the city of Ali Meadows is essentially finished being built. So the only things I really need are maybe like holy site prayers. Like, do I really need anything but this? 
We've got an envoy in the bank. I'm going to send one to Arma. This will give me um, plus three faith across a bunch of different buildings. We're up to 400 faith per turn. Just by the way, to put that in perspective, Ethiopia is making 170. I'm making 400. Japan's making 200. Basel's making 100. Tamar's making 200. Norway's making 73. Mansa Moose is making about 50. And Patrick Cutie is making about 20. So we are absolutely shredding it on faith. However, do keep in mind that shredding it on faith means we're bottom science, it means we're bottom culture, it means we're bottom domination, it means we're bottom everything. Also, where were the people at the start of this stream that were like, oh, reroll time. You know what, dude? It's more like rewind time. We need to go back in time and slap them up the side of the head. All right, we're fine. Objectively fine. But I think now that the engine is active, we're starting to spread and the apostles are starting to roll in. I think I'm going to call that the end of this video and the end of this live stream. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.